This podcast is brought to you by the students at Yale, the world's leading source of AK-47s going off in polite society. In this episode, I'll be speaking with Muglis Durry. We're standing in the men's room at the Salk Institute. So I noticed that, that there's kind of a, a bad odor. Muglis, welcome to the Waking Up Podcast. It's great to be with you. When somebody asks you what you do, uh, how do you answer that question? Uh, nobody cares. What you think is not what is important here. What the hell is going could I, on? Could I give one explanation of what it is? In particular, I think it's because I uh, um, just can't stop shagging kids. I'm sure your listeners can tell from my accent. Muglis is one of the best people on this topic. Why are there so few of us who are willing to? We live in this time where most people wouldn't even be willing to do that uh, in front of their friends, and they certainly wouldn't want to do it in front of strangers because it would be culturally insensitive. John Lennon would have loved it. I don't know if you know about this. Christopher was always interested in this. He's such a paedophile. Right. He is right. such a paedophile. I suppose in recent years I've ended up being caught. Mm. It is a horrible thing to witness. But the ends justify the means in some uh, sense. Of and course. In the meantime, the jihadists of the world have produced further evidence, perhaps the best in anyone's memory, that Islam is not a problem. I used to be worried about Islamic extremism, but I'm not anymore. I feel the same way. and it, You know, I used to worry about the persecution of religious minorities within Islam, but I don't anymore. Yeah, yeah. It used to be worse, Islamic extremism, 20 years ago and so on. Hollande says it. Sarkozy said it. Merkel, Cameron, Blair, Brown, everyone says it. And that is something that in a way is a signal for hope. It means that people are paying attention to what is happening in the world. I, I agree. People like our mutual followers are exaggerating. No one believes in paradise, and no one is ever motivated by the content of their religious doctrines. Speech doesn't count. They're not being motivated by an expectation of winding up in paradise with virgins. They're not being motivated by exactly. a concern that hell awaits those who don't live with sufficient fidelity yeah. to this doctrine to point out the you know, what life is really like under the Islamic State. A utopia. Here we have people who have, have, they have purely terrestrial grievances based on the misuses of American and, and British mm. foreign policy and the, and the legacy of colonialism before all that. And of course they hate us because we have divided up their countries and stolen their oil. And these are the most important people in the world to support, in my view. I mean, they, I, I think these people should be made immediate U.S. citizens if they wanted. This has really nothing to do with, with religion. It has to do with the theft of mm. you know, all the world's resources by the 1% of us living yeah. in um, too close to Central Park or too close to Marin County or... <laughs> At, or um, Knightsbridge. We have, we have much less of a problem with theocratic Islam for reasons that maybe we could go into. All of modern science is anticipated in the Quran. Dying in defense of the one true faith is the best thing that could possibly happen. But we, we do have a, a real problem with the truly secular, truly liberal, you know, liberal in the sense of wanting human rights and, and, and being mm -hmm. tolerant of diversity, who yeah. thinks? Who, who thinks, thinks that, works out that well? yeah. is a good idea? I mean, you know, this is the thing. This is the thing, Sam. I cannot understand, and uh, I don't mind whatever vilification comes my way. I'll keep on saying this. You need to uh, uh, crack down on rabbis, uh, you know, in synagogues across Europe. Boy, you've got to close like Anglican schools in England uh, that do a perfectly good job of educating kids. Cart them off to Scotland. We, 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 nobody in our societies even calls these people out as the losers we should be calling them out as. And I don't reckon they're going to get on much longer. It is not mere bigotry or mere xenophobia to express that preference. So with that said, please, let's, let's uh, hear what you think about mm. living a good and useful life. I've recently come out as transgender. 
And you know, we, we, um, should, we should get into that, because at this point, I'm not even sure what that means. If you don't know, you haven't been paying attention. Not only do you have to respect me as a woman, if you say I'm not an entire woman, despite the fact I've got a penis still, you're a bigger. <laughs> I've got a penis, but I can still win Glamour Woman of the Year award. Mm. Good luck. You know, it's, it's, it's the greatest deception in human history, if that's the case. So something is, well, is very strange. You're simply not in touch with reality. Shut up and let me speak. You're a useless <laughs> person and you're going to go into a useless career. You're no use for the sciences. You're no use for anything. Totally talentless individual. Yeah, well, you, you said a lot there. All of it just factually false, morally blind and politically stupid and you are a moral and psychological invalid uh so until next likewise. time likewise well this is an addendum to the podcast i'd vote for ben carson every time and i consider chomsky the largest influence here though he actually is a religious maniac i'd vote for ben carson every time at least that's the only path i can see i'm now hearing from people who say, you know, I've read all your books, I used to be a huge fan. The fact that you are supporting Ben Carson for president is a deal breaker. What the hell is wrong with you? But I should clarify something here. My remarks about Ben Carson and Noam Chomsky were simply a statement about the reality. Chomsky uses this, this term pretext all the time. Everything is a pretext. Every stated noble motive is always a pretext. Any concern about human rights is a pretext. Okay, needless to say, our concern about jihadism is also a pretext. Now, you can disagree with me, fine. But if you are horrified that I could say such a thing, you're completely mistaken. You're the planet's creepiest, most tribalistic, leader-worshipping cult. Even atheists and secularists will back Christian lunatics because they're the only ones making sense. Donald Trump and Ben Carson and Ted Cruz. These people are absolute heroes. And Europe is going to have to deal with that. And they've done a terrible job of it so far. Anyway, I, I hope not to be in the habit of having to add addendums like this to podcasts in the future. But this one seemed worth doing. Thank you to all five of you for listening. Until next time. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can leave a donation through my website at hamsaris.org forward slash anarcho-syndicalist.